have here at the sun in Accra. I am Misa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. This is your election command center. Coming up, the headlines. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven insecticide spray and coil. Piccadilly biscuits. And My Life Insurance. And the headlines. Fresh faces pop up in just ended MPP parliamentary primaries in orphan constituencies. And also coming up, a delegate meet and timely death at Ablekuma South after collapsing. Former President Rawlings hands NDC a big blow as he insists parties should forget about 2020 elections. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And we look at more election related stories tonight. The Municipal Chief Executive for Asakori Mampon, Alhaji Ali Du Seidu, will again contest current minority chief whip in Parliament, Muntaka Mubarak, in the 2020 election for the Aswansi seat. Ali Du received an overwhelming endorsement following a popular acclamation held at the St. Paul's Catholic Church in Aswansi. Here's a report by William Evans Inkum. Despite issues surrounding the exercise, majority of the over 800 delegates turned up to support the candidature of 2016 candidate Ali Duseidu. The Aswasi constituency branch of the NPP further buttressed their zeal of annexing the seat by announcing the reuniting of former chairman of the constituency, Michael Brenya. Brenya was suspended in 2015 following the murder of Abubakar Mohammed after an internal politics clash. Ali Duseidu's confirmation received a rapturous jubilation from the delegates. He told TV3 that winning the Asawasi seat in 2020 is non-negotiable. What you see today is the starting point. We embarked on the house to house, house campaign. It will not be left out. Everywhere that we went to campaign, we will go there and campaign. We will knock on the doors of everybody. Go to all public governments, all social programs, and make sure that victory comes away. So, inshallah, that is what we are going to do. Alidu becomes the first candidate to stand on the ticket of his party on two consecutive times in Aswasi since its creation in 2004. And the new patriotic parties. Parliamentary candidate for the Ododo Diodo constituency, Neil Lante Bannerman, says he's confident of winning the 2020 general elections, and he said this after being declared winner of the NPP primaries in the constituency. Neil Lante Bannerman won the NPP primaries in the Ododo Diodo constituency with 543 votes, beating three other contenders. Ni Yaboy Anan pulled 220 votes, Reginald Nibi Ayibonte pulled 70 votes, while Ni Achelenate had 11 votes. Before the declaration of results, some concerns were raised by the aspirants. <laughs> Order was finally restored and proceedings continued. The winner, Neil Antebanaman, said the party is poised for victory in the 2020 elections. I have proven that I am a spectacular unifier and I work with each one of them so that we can attain 2020. 2020, I know we are winning and the delegates have spoken. We have decided to take it and we are winning 2020 with Neil and Tebanama. The other candidates pledged their support for the winner. For my wealth, my intellectual muscle and my advocacy and oral ability, I will support him to continue the seat for MPP. Nile, Kenjemu, Niyo Akakemi, 
Nous tous les gens qui ont cassé les bancs, ils ne sont pas en I am a true son of the soil. I am a shite. I am an MPP. Patriot. And I would forever support my party. And In more election related stories, District Chief Executive of Elembele, Kwesi Bonzo, has won the NPP parliamentary primaries to represent the party for the third time. He polled 359 out of a total valid vote of 630 to beat his fierce contender and Western Regional Treasurer, Homa Mienza, who had 262 votes of the that was vote carried out today. Now, addressing a charge delegates, Mr. Bonzu said his victory was obvious. Our Western Regional reporter, Eric Yao Ajay, spoke to him after he was declared winner. So it's all over here at LMLA and as many predicted, the district chief executive won. He had 359 votes as against his fierce rival, Hana Meza, who had 262 of the votes and the 10 aspirants also had nine. There were nine rejected ballots. So in all, 632 delegates participated in today's primaries. I have with me Bonzo K, popularly known as 34 Kewa. Uh, this is definitely a sweet win for you. Uh, I thank God. I thank God for the victory. But most importantly, I want to thank my supporters, MPP delegates, who against all odds work very hard to secure the victory. This victory belongs to the MPP of LMLA. That's all I will say. Uh, we work hard for it. We have been in the trenches. And I believe the delegates, they have spoken and spoken loudly. The next thing is for us to march on against NDC and win this seat for the first time for a new patriotic party. Okay. Uh, before today's exercise, I had an interview with you about the popular saying that fear delegate, but yours was trash delegate. Is this a manifestation of what you've been thinking all along? Because I know the delegates, I know them. The reason I trust them is that I know them and I know they trust me. Uh, they, I've been with them for so long. I've been around for 23 years in this constituency and I trust them and they trust me. So, of course, uh, it's, it's democracy. Definitely, the opponent, they also work very hard. You expect them to get some votes. But eventually, the delegate has spoken. And we believe that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Thank for you, what really worked for you? Uh, my relationship with the delegates. I have a very good relationship with them. As I speak here, I know each of the delegates by name, first and second names. And they know that I'm the person that can lead this party to victory in 2020. Has your other contenders called you? Uh, currently my phone is off. Even if they call, they won't get me. It's been a long day. We want to go back and take some rest and then continue tomorrow. What message are you giving them? Uh, my message is that I want to thank them for making me stronger. Of course, they gave me a good run for, for my money. They worked very hard. At some point, people even thought that they could uh, unseat me. But the God has his way of doing And I believe that uh, God will is what has happened. So. Are they going to play any role leading into the Of course, of course, of course. Saudo, Still on the NPP primaries, a presidential staffer, Alex Maate, has emerged as parliamentary aspirant for the NPP in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. He polled 269 votes against his contender, Rita Akwele Adute, who got 207 votes out of the total votes cast in the NPP parliamentary orphan constituencies. And speaking to our reporter, Joseph Armstrong, he vowed to unseat the incumbent MP, Sam George, come 2020. Yeah.
won this election. So you tell me, how's it feeling like now? This is a well fought battle. And I want to say thank you to everybody, even to the media. I thank my team too. I thank my family who allowed me to leave them and to come and sojourn and to this successful end. Yes, I thank the party too for giving me the opportunity from the national, the region, and the constituency of our party. I thank all the party members and all the delegates, those who voted and those who didn't vote for me. It's democracy. I thank all of them. You know that you are now going to meet the incumbent MP in person of Sam George. Are you ready for the battle? I know Sam George wouldn't be sleeping from today. I know his sleep will vanish from today because I am coming like Haina. And mm. yes, in 2020, inshallah, this constituency will no more be for NDC. What will you do to win over Sam George? We will get there. Come down, come down. And the Amasaman constituency primaries was cancelled Saturday morning after a disqualified aspirant, Roxon Edubuahin, secured a court injunction on the process. Stanley Niblu has more. More than 600 delegates in the Amasaman constituency thronged the Amasaman Junior High School Park as at 7.30 Saturday morning to elect one of the four cleared aspirants for the 2020 general elections. Hopes were high for the aspirants and their teaming delegates. But news of an interlocutory injunction on the electoral process by an earlier disqualified aspirant, Roxin Edu Boahin, changed the mood at the proposed voting center. Roxin Edu Boahin, who contested the primaries and lost in 2011, was alleged to have secured the strategic injunction on Friday, September 27, and served the party's hierarchy and the Electoral Commission. Amasaman constituency chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Michael Kojo Asante, was equally served notice of the injunction. My director of elections called me. I also spoke to my regional chairman, asking them about the injunction. As a matter of fact, that is where I heard of the injunction first. And he specifically gave the instruction that don't go ahead to conduct the elections. So as it is now, I'm unable to go ahead to let the election happen. And I'm not too sure the EC will come. But the aspirants were not infused with the news. Municipal Chief Executive Clement Nee Lamte Wilkinson, one of the aspirants, charged his supporters not to be dissuaded by the injunction. Kukudu, I'm pleading to everybody here, please, don't go home, be here and we are going to vote today, and I'm sure we are going to vote, but I want you to pick your phone, call your brother or your sister who is not here right now, and let him or her come here to come and vote. Eventually, the election was cancelled, but not without concerns from other aspirants. Don't vote for the men. They troublemakers they are bent on fighting in fact i call what is going on that their own is like a crab like family issue nobody wants his fellow to go i've made my preparation i've done my campaign i've i, 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 I finished everything and um, i was looking forward to be crowned as the pc of amasama constituency today and then we were just told that there is a court injunction and that the elections is not coming on some infuriated delegates describe the injunction as retribution to the entire party. He has made sure that he has punished the party leadership, he has punished uh, the aspirants, constituency executives, we the delegates as well as the people we represent. Everybody has been punished today. So Edouard has single-handedly punished the whole of the Amasama constituency this morning. Amasaman District Police Commander Superintendent Frederick Mensah at 10 a.m. ordered the delegates to leave the proposed voting center. We are making sure that everybody leaves the ground to ensure that there will be no breach of the peace. At the time, the news team was returning from the scene. Tents erected were being parked. The party says it is going to address its issues and reschedule a date for the election. 
and in the Bonkata Manso constituency, member of the NPP communications team and deputy national security coordinator at the airport, Hope Senadoye, has won to represent the NPP in the 2020 parliamentary polls. And Hope Senadoye polled some 321 votes out of 652 votes cast. <laughs> member of the NPP communications team and deputy national security coordinator at the airport Hobson Adoye has won the primaries to represent the NPP in the 2020 parliamentary polls in the Bonkatamansu constituency. He pulled 321 votes cast out of 652 votes cast beating four other contenders. If I can run you by the Results for the Kumkatamanso constituency. The first candidate was Prince Darcy. He pulled 56 votes. The second candidate was William Ofosu Asante. He also had 203 votes. We also had Mark coming all into the election, also pulling 22 votes. And we also had Honorable Hobson Jalvi Adoye, who also pulled 321 votes. We also had David Kwei Anan, who also also had 46 votes. At the end of the day, we had four rejected ballots and the total vote cast was 652 votes. I would say the delegates have spoken. They've spoken with a voice to indicate to NDC that MPP Konkatamanso is ready for the seat. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. I am not I'm going to sit. I'm going to work hard and make sure we wrestle the seat. Thank you. But there was confusion earlier in the day when a text message went viral amongst delegates purported to suggest a candidate had been taken out of the race. Meanwhile, in the Yada East constituency, 384 delegates cast their ballot out of 407. Two women, current district chief executive Sarah Dubaki Pobi and Betty Koleki Achupi Kwashi closely contested. Sarah Dubaki Pobi um, won with 263 done? votes. I know a lot about the people and I think with the infrastructure I have done a lot. Somebody will ask why is the DC contesting for this position? Our constitution have given us the mandate to contest in orphan constituencies because we have really done infrastructure projects and we are going to sell the party for the people. Now, out of 23, only four constituencies are the orphan constituencies in the central region and areas are Aguna East, Ejumaku, Enyan, Esiam, Komenda, Edina, Egwafu, Abrim, and Cape Coast South. Mr. Elisha Debra Udum, one of the aspirants among four aspirants for Ejumaku, Enyan, Esiam constituency primaries of the central region and works at the Tem Harbour was accused of vote buying as he shared 10 Kia Picanto cars branded at the Ijumako Biasa Township. All right, so the colleague aspirants are accusing him of vote buying. And uh, there is more on the NPP primaries, but let's go to the touch screen to my colleague Portia Gaba, who is standing by to bring us more. Thank you very much, Isamonia. Let's go to the Garu constituency where Emmanuel Asori had 143 votes against Osman Musa, who won with 176 votes, and he won by 33 votes in the Garu constituency. And the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, Alex Mate, he is a presidential staffer. He won with 269 of the votes against Rita Adote, who had 207 votes. And in the Ablekuma South constituency, Bernard Nianya Brown won with 347 votes against Samolate, who had 273 votes. Let's go to the Bulga East constituency and Abole Emmanuel won with 111 votes against David, who had 87 votes. That's in the Bulga 
East constituency. In the Nabdam constituency, Yen Sapak had 111 against Boniface Agambela, who won with 147 votes cast in the Nabdam constituency. In Sege constituency, Lina Bakekwa won with one, didn't win. It was rather Eunice Lassi who won with 194 votes cast against Lina Kwa, who had 143 votes. In the Yellow Krobo constituency, Francis Apete won with 353 votes against Eric Teta, who had 341, meaning he won by 12 votes. In the Afran Plain South constituency, William Hall won with 307 votes against Jacob Zinlili, who won who, who had 202 votes. The winner was William Hall, who had 307 votes. In the Pooh East constituency, Joshua Kweku Abonkra won with 202 votes against David Yaomensa, who had 154 votes. In the Isuojaman constituency, Paul Asariansa won with 539 votes against Kwame Edudankwa, who had 131 votes. In the Cape Coast South constituency, the winner was Ernest Arthur, that's the mayor of Cape Coast, who won with 271 votes against Perry Mensah, who had 133 votes. In the Ada East constituency, the winner was Sarah Pobi, and Sarah is the current district chief executive, and she won with 263 votes against Betty Achupi, who had 126 votes. In the Salaga North constituency, the winner was Abdullah Idi, who won with 94 votes against Tahiru Fusainu with 67 votes. Now let's go to the Karaga constituency where Dr. Sayuti did not win. He had 78 votes and the winner was Deputy Energy Minister Dr. Minata, who had 308. 85 votes. In the Tonkatamanso constituency, Hobson Adoye won with 321 votes. He is the Deputy National Security Coordinator in charge of the airport. And he won against um, William Ofosu Asante, who had 203 votes. So he will be representing the NPP in the Tonkatamanso constituency in the 2020 polls. In the Daboya Mankarigu constituency, Mahama Saini won with 162 votes against Samuel Tika, who had 77 votes in the constituency. In the Esutifi South constituency, the winner was Yao Ousu Brimpong, who had 293 votes against Alaji Suraj, who had 193 votes. Yoyo -yo constituency, Oscar Liwal won with 211 votes against Aka Frank Fuseini, who had 51 votes. More results coming in, and for more updates, just log on to our website at freenews.com, also on Facebook as well as Twitter and TV3 Ghana. Isa. <laughs> And now, former President Jerry John Rawlings has enjoined the leadership of the National Democratic Congress to focus its attention on winning the 2024 general elections. He says, though the main opposition party, NDC, is vigorously campaigning towards the 2020 elections, winning the polls will only be possible in 2024. Here's a report by Benjamin Adu. 
Former President Rawlins was speaking at the Conference of National Cadres of NDC in Kumasi. The conference, attended by cadres from all 16 regions, was under the theme Effective Mobilization and Organization for Victory 2020, the role of cadres. But the member's founder says it will not be easy for the NDC to win power in 2020. He believes a 2024 target will be more viable for the NDC to win. There are some amongst us in the leadership who initially didn't think, you know, after four years you can wrestle power from these people. And yet, if I may speak frankly, I've gone ahead and almost purchased the power of this party into their pockets and claiming to be aiming towards 2020 when I know when some of you should know that your aim is not really towards 2020. You secure 2020 out of the way for yourself so nobody will, will you will be the whatever knowing damn well that you just give it from full what you call it to pass through when you know 2024 is your target. The former president also called on leaders of the party to embrace the politics of conscience, truth and the power of conviction to regain power. He said it is important for the party to institute corrective measures to undo the mistakes leading to the loss of the 2016 election. A leading member of the NDC, Professor Joshua Alabi, noted the history, strength and survival of the NDC have always hinged on the power of conviction. When we were leading the mobilization and organization of our party, we were not talking, we were not asking for money. We were moving everywhere. And you could see that from the results come 1992, 1996. But as the money backs came in, the system started moving backwards. I believe what we want to do is to ask ourselves, what were we doing and what can we do to bring back our party and to make sure that we put in discipline and sanity in the system. Former Eastern Regional Minister Enchibwe Siako Setre said the failure of the NPP government to deliver on the economic goods offers opportunity for the NDC to wrestle power from the ruling party. In other news, the second Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Alban Badbin, um, has accused government of playing to the political gallery with the recent arrest of some persons who they claim had plans of destabilizing the country. And Alban Badbin says the evidence made available and the arrest can only constitute an attempt for political gains. The evidence so far, mm -hmm. what you made available to all of us mm -hmm. shows that that group of people could not have overthrown our government. And so why is government doing that? Maybe for political benefit. And these quick uh, political gains don't help the system. They don't help development. And so I want government to move away from it. He says government only wants to change the narrative while challenging government to put the evidences before the court. It could be another side of it could be that in, in the preparation to the 2016 election, uh, I know that now it's an open secret that uh, the parties in this country are infiltrating the ranks of the security agencies. Both major parties are doing that. And the, the attempt by government may be to preempt what happened before the 2016 election. And I, will, I, will, I, will, I will want to challenge the government that if they have the evidence, they should put it before the, the, the court and, 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 and level the right charges. You're watching News 360 and there is more coming up. Stay with us. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Pupils of the Preprashed Basic School in the Doma East District of the Bono region sit on pieces of logs during instructional hours. Stanley Nibler reports the school also shares an office with the community's CHIPS compound. 
Peprashed is a hinterland community surrounded by more than four adjoining communities. The community is fortunate to have a school which for more than five years has been serving pupils in the catchment areas. <laughs> However, teaching and learning are done under harsh conditions. The Parents Teacher Association supported the school by providing some makeshift structures to accommodate the pupils. Made with bamboo, the structures protect the children from the scorching sun but expose them whenever it rains. Without adequate furniture, pupils strive to catch up with the day's academic activities. Few available desks serve primary pupils, but seats are allotted pupils on first-come, first-served basis. Kindergarten pupils sit on pieces of logs. The dusty floor is an alternative. <laughs> The situation, which has persisted for more than four years, makes concentration in class very difficult. Teachers posted to the school find the situation discomforting. Class teachers are also suffering in classrooms because the pupils don't have chairs uh, and tables. Uh, they are suffering. All that we are saying is that the government should come to our aid. Some parents say they are interested in changing the fortunes of the school. The school also shares an office with the community's chips compound. The community allotted the place to the school after the authorities became stranded accessing a place to keep their property. This is office. Or no buy a yaji hui. Nti ye gusu aye office no. Ya ye dia hoden. Ye nyam won fri baby ya. Oko can't chill empen in forna. Nya be ya se u yati, ye be boa ye be boa. Mwana so umhum we be ya. A mud structure being constructed to serve as a school's office has stalled because the parents say they did not reap enough from the sale of their cocoa to buy roofing sheets. In spite of the challenges, teachers are doing their best to impact the pupils. We are doing our best to help the children because there's no other means of doing that. Dama is District Director of Education, Joseph Amwa Mensa said the issue of furniture is widely spread in the district. Furniture is a big issue. From this I am saying that if need be, any contractor is awarded to any contractor to build classroom, they shouldn't leave the furniture component. They should also make sure they get the furniture into the place so that when you hand it over, uh, then it's a total turn. They enter in and don't have much problem. District Chief Executive for Doma East, Emmanuel Kofi Ajuman, said plans are in place to address the phenomenon. Furniture is quite um, challenging. The uh, government recently brought us some desk, but uh, it was way, way, way below uh, the, the quantity that we needed. Assembly is making that effort, um, but um, the budget line is not so huge. Um, what we have been doing is trying to do so much with something little. That is the effort we've been making. Our idea is that if we are able to get timber free of charge, then with the same amount of money, we should be able to do more of the furniture rather than giving it on contract and the person will have to go and buy wood and buy almost everything before he does it. Teachers and pupils of Piprashed require stakeholders' commitment in addressing their concerns. Let's now go to the Doma Central Municipality where the building accommodating kindergarten pupils of the Chichire Basic School is near collapse. Stanley Nibler reports this is putting the lives of pupils and teachers at risk. Over 200 people from eight dispersed communities are enrolled at the Chichere Basic School. Primary one to six pupils study in a decent classroom constructed by the Municipal Assembly less than a decade ago. However, the building has started deteriorating. There are defects in all the classrooms. Fire, Holy Kindergarten pupils are confined in a mud structure. 
Already, the structure has had portions of its roof ripped off. Most of the wood supporting the structure have been eaten by termites. This puts the lives of teachers and pupils in danger, affecting teaching and learning in the process. The Parents Teacher Association put up the structure to accommodate the growing population of the school. It is long term value that uh, the government should have come in to build the permanent structure for us. So if it is um, windy, you have to close the children to go home because of the, the, the structure of the um, block. The state of the building residency has reduced the school's enrollment. We are moving from village to village to convince them that uh, sooner or later the government will come and put up uh, a new searcher for us so they should bring them to the school. And even we, we started with a small feeding program which is helping them. We were managing the, the internally generated funds to uh, retain the st students in the school. Aside the deplorable state of the school building, furniture in the school is inadequate. A broken bench serves the pupils. The junior high school also has a similar problem. The community said it is willing to support the school but lacks the funds. Municipal Chief Executive for Doma Centra, Dwisa Watara, said funding remains a major challenge to the provision of infrastructure in the municipality. We have so many cases you know, in the municipality, but in all of this, um, it's a challenge. But we are doing our bit to make sure that we make life comfortable for our people. So it's not only Chichire. Of course, um, if you get the funding, why not? We'll go there to work for our people. That's what we are looking forward to you know, doing. The assembly has, however, provided teachers with a bungalow, hoping to secure funds to address the remaining challenges. The Chichire school, like others, would require stakeholders' commitment to address its challenges. And that's all for Mission. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks so much for your time. In entertainment news tonight, Globe Productions has a new stage play coming off on Sunday, September 29, dubbed The Legend Play. The play is focused on real-life experiences of prominent personalities who have transformed lives and promoted positive change in society. Dubbed The Legend Play, the project will chronicle the life experiences of legend and role models with a view to inspire the spirit of virtuousness in others. The people we call legends are basically those who have transformed lives and then made changes in our society. The maiden edition of the would-be annual play will celebrate centenarian and national chief imam, Sheikh Dr. Osman Nuhu Shariputu. The personalities themselves are going to play a role in the play. They're surely going to be on stage performing. That is how unique the Legends play is. And the fact that at the end of each play, we are actually going to honor the legend with a Lifetime Achievement Award. If you want to see how Sheikh Dr. Osman Sharabutu is going to act, be there yourself, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But there are also other lead actors. Archbishop Palmer Buckle is yeah. going to be in there. And then, of course, Apostle Professor Opoku Onyina will also be there. I myself will be at the background. <laughs> <laughs> The much hyped play will take place at the Kempinski Hotel Gold Coast City on September 29 this year. And that's it for this edition of News 360. I am Issa Moni. And I am Porsche Gabo. Up next is music. 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 It's